Cloud War crew by north by route one. Route three moving well, but the northbound ramp to the low connector has delays where the left lane is closed. South of the city expressway. Okay. BC. 95 north, you're gonna reduce speed pass. So in the very early 1900s, the aughts, um, the crystal set, of course, reigned supreme. The biased detector is the way that most people are going at this time. And that goes right up through into the 12, into the teens, and so on. Uh, crystal sets continue to be used, especially at the long waves with damped waves like buzzing type signals. But when the Audion finally does come along, people begin to experiment with it both as an amplifier, an oscillator, and as a detector. And as a detector, when properly biased, the Audion was found to not only pro provide audio amplification, but also detection and RF amplification. So those are three things you could do with the Audion. And uh, people were starting to do uh, a lot of crazy things in the, uh, in the teens. But uh, the regen had not become uh, known yet, and uh, the Gridley detector was found to be just about the most sensitive detector that was out there. We're going to look at that Gridley detector, and you guys are going to be very surprised. So reliably on this channel, I like to start with some theory. So here we go on the Gridley detector. Like most of these foundational radio circuits, sometimes it's a bit fuzzy to assign either blame or inventor status. But most folks agree that the circuit itself is attributed to the great radio pioneer Lee DeForest around 1912. This circuit represents the detector used in most of the commercial radios, including the TRF sets of the 1920s. By the mid-30s, when the superheterodyne receiver type begins to dominate, the simpler and more linear plate detector becomes favored. At small input levels, the grid leak detector produces higher output amplitude than a simple crystal or plate detector. Higher gain tubes like high mu triodes and pentodes will give more recovered audio with the grid leak detector. In other words, it's going to be louder. Early receiver schematics seem to be sometimes missing the grid leak resistor. Shown is a receiver with only a capacitor connected to the grid. How could this have worked? The answer is easier than you might think. Leakage. That's right, leakage through that same capacitor acted as the grid bias producing side effect. Remember that we're trying to accomplish two things with the triode detector. First, detection, in order to extract the slower moving audio from the carrier and secondly, to amplify the same. Proper bias is required to put the triode part into class A amplification uh, to amplify the detected audio. And there's a time constant to consider too that directly influences the frequency response of the extracted audio. So there's a lot going on with the selection of those grid leak components to get things optimized. Let's consider the operation. The control grid and cathode are operated as a diode while at the same time the control grid voltage exerts its usual influence on the electron stream from cathode to plate. That's the amplifier section. In the circuit, the grid capacitor couples a radio frequency signal, or carrier, to the control grid of the tube. The capacitor also facilitates development of a DC voltage on the grid. That's our bias. The impedance of the capacitor is small at the carrier frequency and high at the modulating frequencies. This capacitor is typically between 100 and 300 picofarads. A resistor, our grid leak, is connected either in parallel with that capacitor or from the grid to cathode. The resistor per permits a DC charge to leak from the capacitor and is utilized for setting up the grid bias. At small carrier levels, typically not more than 100 millivolts, the grid to cathode space exhibits nonlinear resistance in square law fashion. Grid current occurs during 360 degrees of the carrier frequency cycle, but the grid current increases more during the positive excursions of the carrier voltage than it decreases during the negative excursions. And the grid capacitor plus grid capacitance forms a low-pass filter that determines the audio frequency bandwidth at the grid.
So this is the Miller capacitance and the capacitor in the grid leak. So that is your upper frequency response filter. This is very similar to a grid stopper calculation in a modern amplifier. We use the grid leak detector only in small signal square law nonlinear detection mode because we want the maximum sensitivity. Does this mean that the audio will be somewhat distorted? Yes, compared to other dynamic range linear detectors, the grid leak detector does produce more distortion. But in small signal operation of the grid leak detector, the highest grid leak that results in desired intelligibility of the demodulated audio will provide the greatest practical detection sensitivity. So we substitute sensitivity for fidelity. 2 mega ohms is a good choice for a grid leak resistor. Generally, the higher resistance grid leaks can be used for CW reception with a separate BFO, where we're limiting the audio bandwidth to around 2500 hertz or less. Uh, so we can use larger grid leak resistors uh, for CW. There's also a large signal mode that's possible with this circuit, and it's more linear, but at the expense of sensitivity. So this so-called power mode of, uh, of grid leak bias is not generally used. A giveaway to this setup is a very low value of grid leak resistor like 220K rather than our 2 meg. So let's look at a typical design. So the grid capacitor is chosen to be about 10 times the input grid capacitance and it's typically 100 to 300 picofarads with the smaller value for screen grid and pentode tubes. As the resistance of the grid leak is increased, the grid resistance itself increases and the audio frequency bandwidth at the grid decreases for a given capacitance. For grid leak power detection, the time constant of the grid leak and the capacitor must be shorter than the period of the highest audio frequency to be reproduced. So a grid leak of around 250K to 500K uh, is suitable with a capacitor of 100 picofarads. But once you do the math, which is R equals 1 over 2 pi FC, where F is the highest audio frequency to be re reproduced and C is the grid capacitor value, if you solve for F, you find out that uh, with a 2 meg and a 100 picofarad capacitor, the audio cutoff actually starts at 800 hertz. And by 5K, 5 kilohertz, the signal will be down by 8 to 10 dB. Yes, this is audio distortion. It's a high cut, but it's not objectionable in simple lo-fi radios or in TRF sets. And we can make up for it usually with the earpiece uh, or the speaker if we have preemphasis to the high response. In a typical 1920s vintage radio, with a capacitor of 100 picofarads and a grid leak of 2 or 3 meg, distortion probably began around 1 kilohertz, but the speakers of the time were barely of any use above 3 to 4 kilohertz anyway. In early radios, there was more of an interest in gain and fewer stages than in frequency response, as each valve stage was an expensive item. Finally, the plate to output must be considered. The plate current is passed through a load impedance chosen to produce the desired amplification in conjunction with the tube characteristics. In other words, we're putting a certain current through the plate resistance or plate impedance. In non-regenerative receivers, a capacitor of low impedance at the carrier frequency is connected from the plate to cathode to prevent amplification of the carrier frequency. This could be 1 or 200 picofarads, for instance. Of course, a high-value audio choke or high-impedance audio interstage transformer is the best way to get high-recovered audio output with a grid leak detector. But we can use an ordinary resistor and cap coupling to get some acceptable detection level for our piezo earpiece. So this is the first uh, radio that I built uh, using a tube. It was a grid leak detector using a 3V4 and the 3V4 is just a power output tube used in those portable radios of the 1950s. There's many, many other equivalent tubes and similar tubes that you could use. And you just wind uh, 75 to 90 turns of wire on a 1 inch to 2 inch form.
that's going to get you in the ballpark of the broadcast band and you need a tube socket of course and then there's the problem of the variable capacitor I'd be very very disappointed in you if you went out and bought one of these brand new capacitors for $45 or something I'd be much prouder if you found an old $5 radio at a flea market and removed the uh, the two or the three section capacitor out of it and just used half of it and then you need something to hear the beautiful music so we need to have an earphone a uh, set of earphones or a little piezo earpiece as shown here that's it that's what got me started uh, building radios so in a grid leak detector you can use just about any type of triode or triode connected pentode and it's going to work just fine um, of course the classic 6J5 or 6C5 triode um, the 6C4 miniature these are the kind of the go-to tubes um, you know for for building most radio receivers that are simple uh, triode types but my first one actually I built with a 3V4 power output tube uh, from a battery portable I took apart and it worked just fine um, I'm going to be using the 1U5 and the 1U5 is a pentode but I'm going to wire it up as a triode the reason I'm using the 1U5 is it will run on a single uh, AA cell so I can use a single AA battery and light this guy up because it only draws 50 milliamps and then for power the grid leak will operate very nicely from 22 volts probably up to 100 volts so like the regen and the little battery powered amplifier I think I'm just going to run it on 45 volts and uh, Wait till you see how simple this is. There's nothing to this receiver. It's just basically the tube, a couple of capacitors, a resistor, uh, the variable and the coil, and uh, you're on the air. Here's a good picture of the receiver. And uh, the way I built it, I uh, resurrected a coil that I'd used for another project. So the coil's actually oversized. It's about double the size necessary as far as the secondary goes. So I have all of these taps and what the taps allow me to do is to tap down the the grid leak into the grid of the tube to get more Q so that's what the taps are all about in reality if you put 60 turns of wire on the 2 inch diameter form you'll be able to tune the broadcast band and uh, the 20 turns on the input as the primary works out pretty well with a decent antenna like a 75 foot wire so even though I used a pretty fancy tapped coil and it gave me flexibility really all you need to do is uh, do a simple 60 turn 20 turn wind on the 2 inch diameter form okay so this is the grid leak detector uh, using the 1U5 pentode and I am using the interstage transformer, the 1 to 2 ratio transformer, which pre presents a fairly high impedance to the tube and gives an even higher impedance to the amplifier, stepping up the voltage a little bit even. Now this is not a regen, so there's no uh, Q enhancement. It's just a uh, detector, uh, a grid leak detector with the amplifying uh, action of the pentode. So as we go higher in frequency, I'll adjust the antenna. Okay, that's WBZ. So we don't have quite as good a selectivity as we had with the region. So this is broad daylight. It's about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. 
and we're getting several stations. We're using the 75 foot antenna. Now, if I replace the transformer with a resistor, for instance, a 47K resistor, I would expect the gain to go down and the impedance to go up. So we'll have to reduce this bypass capacitor we have on there. Uh, but a lot of people don't like using transformers, but I'm telling you, it increases the volume fairly drastically. Are you new business? You really need General Steel. I'm very impressed with General Steel. Helpful. I'd recommend General Steel to anyone looking to build a steel building. Stop wasting money on rent. So let's uh, let's look at the grid leak detector in its most simple form, and that is to use a resistor in the plate. I've got a 15k resistor, uh, a coupling capacitor on the output that goes to the crystal earphones would work very well with this. That's what I would use on it: uh, regular crystal earphones or a crystal earphone. And uh, I do have a bypass capacitor from the plate to ground. Uh, that should be at 100 picofarads, maybe up to 250 if you want kind of a softer sound. Uh, it cuts the highs a little bit more. Remember, the, the, uh, the high impedance that you have here, uh, the bypass will have to change depending on that resistor's value. And it would have to change depending on the transformer's input impedance as well. So. Uh, once you get to a, uh, a transformer, uh, it might have to be a completely different, uh, a completely different capacitor to uh, cut the highs uh, properly. And you're going to hear that it's kind of, uh, the highs have been cut a little bit. Join the thousands who have found five-star relief with maximum strength back aid. <laughs> Anyway. No, it, it's not severe. We were unable to find it. By all accounts, it's not looking like buzzards. This is the grid leak detector. So I overdid it on this coil. Uh, there's about uh, this much of the coil I'm not actually using. Uh, this is a, a much larger diameter coil form than normally I would use. And uh, I put too many turns on there. The primary is good. Um, I would use the full primary, but the secondary uh, takes you all the way down to around 400 kilohertz. We don't need to go that low. So you could take off uh, perhaps uh, 30 or 40 of those turns, and this would still work fine for the broadcast band. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, little video on the grid leak detector. A very useful uh, device. If you've got very sensitive headphones or a piezoelectric earpiece, you'll have fun picking up stations with your grid leak detector. Very little fuss. A great first tube project.